boring. Boring and depressing. Oh. What should we do today? What should we do? Um, oh, sorry, excuse me. Oh, Tom, what's he want? Hi, Gareth, hope you're well, mate. Um, and hello to Gareth's YouTube viewers as well. So for those that don't know me, uh, my name's Tom Watkinson, um, a friend of Gareth's, a uh, keen photographer, a uh, hiker as well. Um, Gareth's going to be kind enough to put my Instagram handle just beneath here, so feel free to uh, check me out. Um, what I'm proposing, Gareth, is a challenge. I'm just in the garage having a bit of a sort out. You can see my soft box. I've got a backdrop gear. behind as well. What I'm proposing is we have a, uh, a, a, a showdown, let's call it. A showdown? Um, <laughs> a self-portrait challenge. Oh, no. So I'm going to hashtag it as community SPC. So that's self-portrait challenge. Anyone can be involved to use the hashtags across all social media. Um, but the real showdown is between me and you, Gareth. What I'm proposing is we do no. three photos. We put forward on this YouTube channel, <laughs> uh, three photos each, and we allow your um, subscribers to vote for their favourite. Oh. Um, but in the meantime, across our own Instagram and Facebook, we'll uh, use the hashtag to pick out our favourites and see what everyone else is up to as well. So good luck. There's no rules. Feel free no to rules. use whatever like you want. Uh, the only rule is it has to obviously be around the house because we're in quarantine. So good luck and I look forward to seeing the results, mate. See you in a bit. <laughs> wow. Cheers, Tom. Tom what? Check him out on Instagram. Top, top guy. Um, Self-portrait challenge. You up for it? <laughs> good grief. Um, now I know because he's, he's set this up that he's got something up his sleeve. So this is... I'm gonna have to put. I'm gonna have to put some effort into this. <laughs> right then. Okay. Let's get set up. Let's. Um, we've got a bit of space here. Let's. Uh, let's move the. Let's move the table out of the way and uh, let's give it a go. <laughs> Bring it on, Tom. <laughs> Right then, cheers Tom Watt for this uh, nomination. This will be good fun. I've, I've never, ever, ever uh, done a self-portrait, so I'm actually looking forward to this. Um, it's one of the things I wanted to do when I, when I did my list of things um, I wanted to achieve in lockdown. A self-portrait was actually one of the things I wanted to achieve, so I'm really glad I'm getting around to do this. Um, but if you feel free, I'll put the hashtag down, down, down there, and f feel free if you want to join in the challenge, um, feature that hashtag on your Instagram pictures and stuff like that, and we'll feature it in, in a video, and we'll discuss the winners, and I don't know if we can come up with a prize or something, but it'd be good fun to see how many different self-portraits we can get together. And just be creative, get, get as creative as possible, don't have to involve flashing, but obviously, as long as it's clearly a self-portrait, uh, yeah, feel free to enter. Uh, so yeah, this is really, really going to be good fun. Okay, I'll talk you through the settings. Now, this is a very, very basic setup. This is all I've got in the house pretty much because all my stuff is in my office and I don't have access to that um, due to lockdown and all that malarkey. So I'll talk you through what we've got. So I'm basically gonna be using an off-camera flash. So I use a trigger on top of the camera. This is just a cheap Calumet trigger if they're still making these. Uh, really, really good. This goes on top of the camera and this will make that flash. And the other half of it is attached to this flash here. So that's the receiver, that's the transmitter. Uh, this is a beauty dish, so these are designed to be very, very close to the subject. Really, really awesome bit of kit that. I use them for headshots and stuff. I haven't used one of them for a long time, actually, for probably about eight, probably eight months since I've, since I've done a headshot with that. So this will be, this will be good fun. Um, this is a Bowen's uh, 500 head. Uh, is it the Gemini or is it uh, Esprit? I'm not sure. I've got a few of them. I'm not sure. Um, but you, you, can, you can basically... Uh, this is, uh, I've just basically got this stand here. So that when my camera, I'm going to move that camera over to here um, and I'm going, to, I'm going to use this to focus. So basically I'm going to put some masking tape on the floor, focus on here and then um, I can move this out of the way. And then, I, and then obviously because I'm taking my own picture, I'll be able to stand exactly on the masking tape, focus at about F8, something like that, just to get, make sure I get my, my nice sharp depth of field. The, the sync speed on... Um, with the Fuji is 250th per second. So that's really, really good because it's nice, nice fast shutter speed. Any faster than that and you start getting what they call closed curtain failure, which is the black bars that you'll see. If you start taking photographs of flash and you start seeing black bars at the bottom of your pictures, that's closed curtain failure. That's basically the lights not getting to the camera quick enough. So you have to check with your camera. Most cameras are between 160 and 250 uh, shutter speed, but on the Fuji, you've got a little X next to the 250th. That tells you that that is the shutter uh, sync for a flash. Okay, so this is gonna go on top of the camera in a minute. It will sync that. I'm gonna meter this. I'm gonna put that camera over here and we'll get cracking. 
Um, what I wanted to do is basically, um, with this whole isolation thing, I thought I'd, I'd try and reflect that in the photograph. So let's have a bit of fun, do some posey-ish ones. Um, but I also wanted to do some photographs that reflected how I feel about this whole isolation, how the, the idea of being locked away. And uh, yeah, just, just basically reflect how I'm feeling at the minute. So we'll do one or two fun ones and we'll do some quarantine photographs, shall we say. Let's get cracking. Right, and so we're all set up with X-T3. Uh, we're shooting at f8, so we get a nice sharp image. Depth of field is going to be good. Obviously, it's a good, um, good aperture for portraits as well. Um, you see the X on the 250 there. That's basically telling us. Let me just refocus there. That's telling us that the uh, the, sh the shutter spin seed for flash is 250th per second. Um, so we've got that, and then the ISO is on on its one of the base ISOs, ISO 200, just to give us a nice quality image. And obviously, then we can just adjust the light to suit. Look how elaborate is this setup here. Now this is my uh, the screen I normally use for filming um, my videos in the office, and it's actually tethered off the XT3 to give me a, um, a, f a selfie screen. Basically, I hadn't got any ad adapter to hold it properly, so I've had to uh, put this old vintage camera on it, <laughs> flip it to the side, and use the hot shoe on it. Works well though, perfectly. Right, I'm just going to shut these curtains so I've got more control over the light. A good tip is to put your camera, if you can, in. Um, in DSLR mode, so what that basically means is that the you're not getting an exposure preview off the camera. What's coming through is but basically the ambient light. So no matter what settings I do to that camera, it's not going to change the EVF view at all. So it's basically it, it like looking through a DSLR. Okay, so uh, I know that I focused on this. I put some tape on the floor, um, and I've, I've just realised I've got a slight problem when I've got a microphone in all the pictures. <laughs> Let's have a look at that. Cool, very moody, very moody. <laughs> very grumpy. <laughs> right then, so that's 1/250th f8 ISO 200. I might up the flash a touch just to give me a bit more contrast. Um, let's go to we were we were just under a sixteenth there on the flash. Let's go let's go to bang on a sixteenth. Let's go a two second time running then. Doesn't give me much time to get into position. I think this flash could do with probably being round a little bit more. Wow, that is contrasty. That is contrasty. Good grief. Yeah, so like that. Really, really like the tones. Cool. So what I think I'll do is I'll do a quick moody shot. I'll get rid of the microphone. Then I'll do some, um, I'll do some quirkier ones. Uh, so look, look, it looks like, a, looks like a, a film cover or something like something like the Bourne, one of the Bourne films. <laughs> so let's, uh, yeah, let's give, let's give it a go. Oh, very moody. I like it. I like it. I'm happy with the settings. I think I might bring the ISO down just to 160, just to on the uh, on caution. I forgot to tell you as well. You need to make sure that your image stabilization in the camera is off, and if you've got uh, any stabilization in the lens, make sure that's off as well. Otherwise, your camera will try and correct itself, and you'll get blurry pictures. Next shot, I thought I'd do something with my camera just to make I don't know. Something that I can probably relate to when I'm not so grumpy <laughs> during when all this is over. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my uh, I'm gonna use my X100V dented version um, as a prop, and I'm gonna have to put the map put the mic down. Ah, <laughs> diabolical! <laughs> right, one more attempt. Right then, next plan. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick my head in this jar, and this is just gonna re represent the isolation and being locked away and frustrated, and <laughs> not being able to go anywhere. <laughs> so two shots. First one, I need to stand holding the jar like this. Um, I might hold it like that, so the light can still light me up, but I'm gonna be looking down at a frustrated Gareth. And then the second shot, I'm gonna use this Pyrex dish. Push it against my face, uh -uh. <laughs> take a photograph, and then I'm going to use that photograph and superimpose into that jar. Simples, what could possibly go wrong? Okay, here we go. Let's get the label on the front because that'll make it look more real. 
and I've got to look. So that jar is directly above the focal point, so that should be fine. Um, let's just check that. Right then, that's that picture done. All we need to do is get to the Pyrex dish. And squid you to go into my first. <laughs> See, the problem is I need to get my face filling that, but without anything like my hands in the way as well. So this is quite difficult. Um, and I want, I want my face sort of squidged right against it, uh, but my hands out of the way. So yeah, it's a bit of a challenge. Um, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep plugging at it. <laughs> so it's, it's quite difficult to do because yeah, because you've got to get your hands out of the way of the photograph. Yeah, All right, let's keep going. Finally. Got one, good grief, that took some perseverance. <laughs> good fun, but what I found was I needed to, I needed to angle my face more towards the light and really press the jar in really, really hard, the, the dish. But yeah, got one in the end. So I've got to took about 20 attempts, <laughs> but got one in the end. So I'm gonna merge those two together and that should look really, really cool. Let me know what you think. It's flipping nuts, it's desperate for a haircut. But what I think I'll do, I think I'll do one more image, one more portrait, and this one will be a double exposure. So basically, I'm gonna take a, so, a side on portrait shot um, looking that way, um, and then I'm gonna superimpose over the top using uh, layers in Photoshop, um, some sort of mountain or, or a woodland theme, whichever image I'm sort of drawn to as I edit the photograph. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look through all my images, see which one jumps out as being a, a particular favorite of mine, and uh, what, something that'll make me wish we could get back it out into the mountains and get our freedom again. So this, this, this image will basically sum up how I'm feeling at the minute. So yeah, double exposure, two photographs, one as a, a screen overlay in Photoshop. Right there, they've gone out for a walk. It's difficult to film at home when you've got an eight month old baby. <laughs> they've gone out for a walk now, so uh, yeah, I can finish the video. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. It was a really, really good fun challenge. So thank you, Tom Watt, for, ch for, the, for the challenge. Um, now, the other, uh, probably a couple of weeks ago now, when we, when we first got into isolation, I put out this video with a list of um, things I wanted to achieve during lockdown, actually make make it a positive, give it, make it as, a, as if we've got an opportunity to learn and do things. And a self-portrait was something I, I actually wanted to give a go. And I've, I've obviously been behind the camera for about 18 years and never actually done a self-portrait. So yeah, really glad I did it. It's good fun, cringing <laughs> to see your own, your, own, your own pictures. And obviously you're not gonna like them. If it's somebody else, you obviously, you'd probably like them, but yeah. So not, not, not mad uh, on any of my pictures, but uh, let me know which, which ones you liked in the comments. I'll be, I'll be glad to hear what, uh, what you guys think worked and what didn't. Um, but yeah, we'll have a look at, at Tom's pictures. Now, I, d I didn't touch Tom's photographs until this morning because I didn't want any influence. Um, he sent me them um, yesterday, I think, and I, but I didn't want any influence. Obviously, I'd already done my photo shoot anyway, uh, but I didn't want to see what he'd done until I'd put the video together and come to talk to you guys. So let's have a look at his pictures and, uh, and see what he got up to. Now, I can't believe it actually, but it turns out is the f we're pretty much doing the same thing. Now, I knew he was doing this in his garage with a with a big soft box. So he's 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 wearing a white t-shirt. He's got the side lighting on as well. Um, he's made more of an effort because he's got a smart jacket on, which really looks cool. Um, so yeah, really, really much prefer that photograph. Really, really smart. Uh, fantastic edit as well. Um, but sadly, he's not given us any metadata, so we can't see anything about his settings, but I imagine he's using like a 160th or 200th, because obviously you've got to sync with the flash, um, and probably around about the same aperture, just because it's a good depth of field for portraits, especially when you're doing it yourself. So we'll imagine he's around about F F8, and then probably uh, uh, the base ISO as well. So yeah, really, really cool shot. Really like it, nicely edited, um, definitely smarter than my attempt. Um, Another cool shot, can't believe we're both wearing white t-shirts. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah, his hasn't got the stretch on the, uh, from where my, where my, my lav mic was, uh, was rubbing on my t-shirt, so his looks a lot smarter. But yeah, really nice light though. He's obviously put a gel on the front one, 
uh, maybe he's using two flash, he's got a gel on the front one, and I think he's probably changed it so that the white balance um, on, his, on his flash is different as well. So that's how you get the, con the contrasting colors. So he's obviously put a gel on one and then shifted the camera to, to, to shoot at a different white balance so that, uh, so that the flash looks a bit more blue. Maybe he's just put an overlay grad on there in post, I don't know. But yeah, really, really nice smart, nice smart shot that is. Very moody, much like my, my, my own. Um, but yeah, good shot. And this is smart. Um, I say I looked at this 30 seconds ago and I'm really, really, it looks really cool. Um, obviously he's done it in his garage again, the same sort of setup, stuck a chair in there. Love this lamp on the left hand side, just a bit of ambience and just, again, just sums up. There was no brief for this. We didn't, as you heard the video, there was no like, um, there was no clue that we were going to do this. And obviously this is his, his image, which reflects how he's been coping in isolation. So yeah, <laughs> uh, really smart shot, really nicely lit. Um, very, very cool, simple shot. Like it, well done Tom. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at my images, see what I liked, see what I thought worked, see what I didn't like. Um, first image, this one is okay. Um, I will point out actually, I didn't mention that I was shooting at 1 250th because that's what my shutter speed sync is with the camera, with the flash. Uh, any faster than that, you get closed curtain failure, so you get the black bars appearing on the right hand, or the bottom of the, of the exposure because not enough light has got to the sensor by the time the shutter sensor is closed. So, but I was noticing a very sm slight um, difference in exposure on, on the bottom of the frame. So down the right, because obviously this is a portrait shot, down here there was a slight bar coming down, very, very slight. So you could see that anything past 1 250th and I definitely would have got closed curtain failure. So I, to be safe, I probably should have shot these at around 1 200th just to make sure I didn't get that... Um, that closed curtain failure problem. Now my t-shirt wrecks the image for me, I think it's atrocious. Um, that hand there, I just don't like the photograph. I, I, I think the idea was there, but yeah, I like the effect of how the lights caught the camera. Um, very, very quick edit. All I did was darken the, uh, put um, a burn mask around this side of my, that was already dark around there. So I just put a burn ma mask around left hand side of my head and that's pretty much all I've done I might yeah I dodged I put a bit of a dodge on the eyes on the on the on the whites of the eyes to make them pop a little bit and then I think I've I put a bit of burning around the the white part of the x100 as well and it's actually funny because it's highlighted the dent in the camera there as well which looks quite quite funny but the camera wasn't straight I actually actually straightened that up in post as well and you can see I've not done a very good job because uh, look at my finger there Oh, cause yeah, that's me rushing it at 11 o'clock last night trying to get this video done. But yeah, I've not, I've not done a very good job of masking, uh, of, of getting rid of that on that finger there. It looks pretty naff, doesn't it? So yeah, bit pants there. But yeah, say normally you'd touch the skin up and stuff like that. So you'd normally get rid of any imperfections and whatnot. But as you can see, I just didn't really uh, with that. So these pictures though, quite like them. Just wanted to do some really moody shots. Just, just something that basically reflected how I was feeling with the isolation. And I really like them, I put them all up together. Um, I think they come out really, really nice. I think I like them more because you can't really tell they're me. <laughs> um, I, I think the, the second one's really smart. I like the uh, fourth one as well, looking down there. The light, I moved myself, a bit, I was literally about this far away, that far away from the flash, because then the fall off would be so intense that it'd be really, really dark. There's literally no editing done to these. All I've done is drop the blacks in Lightroom, that's literally it. Um, the exposure was absolutely perfect as well. I perhaps I should have, I should have um, darkened it a little bit because it was a bit too perfect. It was a bit too close to exposing to the right. The histogram was a bit too close to the right. Um, so very, very close to clipping, but obviously it was fine. Um, but yeah, they're really, really smart. They don't look like me. So uh, instant, not instantly recognizable. And I think they look like, um, they sum up what I was trying to achieve. So yeah, pleased with them. This is a fun shot, it worked to a degree. <laughs> Bit of fun, it's something I pre-visualized. Um, I wanted obviously to have my head trapped in that vase, um, that um, glass jar. Um, what I wanted to do, and it didn't work, because I wanted to have my camera in there as well, so I wanted to have my camera pressed against my face so that it looked like I was locked in there with my camera. That's what I wanted to achieve. But no matter how many times I tried with that glass dish, it just wasn't working. Um, I just knew the photograph wasn't gonna work. So I, the ones that did work best were the ones without the camera, sadly. But yeah, very, very easy just to superimpose that. Just uh, literally mask around, the, uh, around that face there. And just, it's, um, it's a screen overlay again over the, uh, over the jar. And then just, um, just darken certain areas just to give it a bit more tone, but that's dead, dead simple. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, nice. I think it worked exactly as I wanted anyway, so. Okay, so these pictures, I wanted to, I wanted to again, with the theme of creating an image that reflected how I'm feeling during isolation, just missing the mountains, missing being out exploring with my mates, uh, missing um, places like Scotland, exploring Snowdonia, just being out free, doing what we what we want to do with our camera. Really, really struggling um, with the idea of being um, locked away with no idea of how long it's going to go on for. So just missing scenes like this, and that photograph summed it up perfectly. I think the profile looking up, uh, just wishing and dreaming that I was up on the mountain. This is a favourite of one of my favourite photographs. Really surprised I haven't actually printed it yet. I think I might make that a priority for today actually to print that photograph. Um, and it's actually a landscape photograph and it was one of the shots in Scotland. So I'll put a link up to that video to see where, when I took that picture. But it was basically one of those occasions where I forced myself to take the camera out of the bag. Wind, rain, hail, horrendous. Um, it was getting dark. It was, it was just dreadful really. And I forced myself to take that, that photograph and I'm really glad I did because it's one of my favorite ever pictures, just basically on the story. Um, so yeah, I, I, that, that, Im that image was instantly the one I was gonna use for this double exposure. And once again, it's just a screen overlay over the portrait, uh, mask round um, with a pen tool, mask round myself there. Obviously the original raw, it wasn't as dark as that there, so I could, I could see clearly around that picture there. Um, and then just uh, mask round that and just a screen overlay on top, on top with this. I'll probably do a video on uh, double exposures in the next couple of days because it's something I wanted to experiment more. Um, there's a, a few different ways you can do a double exposure. Obviously you can do them in camera, which I was gonna try. I've never ever done a double exposure in camera, deliberately. <laughs> Turn it on film once or twice uh, by mistake. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's good. But I think, you know, the, the whole, the, the whole shoot went well. It was it was a good challenge. It was really really good fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know which was your favourite image and feel free share the video. Get involved if you want to have a go at the challenge. Use the hashtag community SPC and uh, we'll definitely look out for your images. But get as creative as possible. You don't have to use fancy flashes or anything like that. You can use whatever you've got around the house. Um, you can get some really, really cool effects if you shine a light through a colander, that sort of thing. So you, there's things like that. We had I, a picture of me and Ellis uh, stood by the blinds the other day because the light was coming through the through the blinds and gave us these nice lines on our faces, which looked pretty cool. Um, so yeah, just just get creative around the house. But yeah, tag us on Instagram and on on um, Twitter or Facebook or whatever, and we'll try and collate all the images. I don't know what we're going to do. We've got plenty of time before we need to sort of close the competition, but we'll we'll, we'll sort out some sort of prize, I'm sure, and, and it'll be a bit of a laugh but it's, a, it's something just to pick up the spirits have a laugh get creative around the house and uh, and uh, put yourself in your it's probably it's quite difficult for a lot of people as well to be in front of the camera uh, I'm one of them <laughs> to take my own picture it's different to talking to the camera but to take my own picture I found quite difficult so yeah give it a go uh, but yeah thank you again Tom Watt check out his Instagram really really nice guy and any information about flashes um, I'll put a link I'll put some links in the description below uh, so you can check out those uh, there'll be Amazon affiliated links so they'll help the channel as well if you did decide to pick any of them up but obviously everybody's watching every penny at the minute aren't they so yeah but thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video a bit different uh, let us say let us know which pictures of mine and of Tom's which you liked and uh, it'd be great to great to hear what you think but yeah do hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you again soon until then stay indoors stay safe and I'll see you again soon cheers guys take care Thank you.